Hi guys. Lately, the Lord's got me uh, doing these midweek videos. He's got me doing the usual Sunday sermons, but He's got me doing this short, these shorter midweek videos. I don't know what He's doing, but I'm following Him. <laughs> um, so I was. So follow me as I follow Christ. If I'm not following Christ, don't follow me. Um, because that's what any preacher, any pastor is supposed to um, be like. Follow us as we follow Christ. If we're not following Christ, you don't have to follow us. Um, and measure everything... I say, or you hear any anybody say against the word of God, because that is our measuring stick. And if anything anybody says is antithetical to the word of God, you don't have to follow that. Um, because your first, your first responsibility as a believer is to follow Christ, not to follow a pastor, not to follow a leader, not to follow an influencer. It's to follow Christ. And and they are there to assist you in your journey with Christ as they're learning as well. Just a little f food for thought. I can, I've been um, seeing everything that's been going on, on in Christendom lately and outside of Christendom, outside of Christendom, and um, I was praying about the sermon for Sunday, and the Lord, the Lord's so weird with me. The Lord um, first would give me a title or a song, and today he gave me a song. He gave me the Beatles, actually. Those of you who have been following me for any length of time know that I love music. I live for music. Um, both... Um, Ver vertical and horizontal. So, I think secular is different than vertical. Vertical means music from person to person, whether it can be a, lo a love song or a song about friendship or a song about romantic love. That's that's horizontal music. Like, it's music from person to person. And, um, horizontal music is music from person, a person to heaven or a person to the, to God or a person to the Father. So secular music um, what we call secular music or non-Christian music is usually uh, just hor horizontal, is usually vertical music. It's usually music from human to human. And, but for me, uh, what what most people call secular music is not secular music. It's just horizontal music. Sec secular music for me, um, in my conversation with the Lord, is music that is totally outside of the will of God. Music that says, uh, um, kill your parents or outside of the antithetical will of God. Um, not antithetical, that's the wrong word. Outside of the will of God totally, like it may be to 
kill your parents and uh, k- kill the deaf, like, you know, the devil is king or whatever. That secular music. Secular music is total um, music that is totally outside of the will and word of God. What most people call secular music is not secular music. Most people call um, music from humans a human ah, secular music. And it is not music from human to human, whether it be in a romantic sense or even a sexual sense, put in its right context is okay. Um, A sexy song between two married people, totally fine. A sexy song between two single people, not fine at all. So it's all about, about in with that kind of music, it's all about the con, context and timing. So for me, that's what it is. That's the difference between um, uh, vertical music and secular music. Vertical music is just music that goes from human to human and secular music is music that is totally of the will of God. Totally has nothing to do with God at all. In fact, it is antithetical. It is antithetical to the will of God. Totally apart from the will of God. And the secular music that I'm talking about has nothing to do with the kind of music, with the style of music, with the genre of music. You can have uh, rock music, hard rock music, that is just as worshipful as anything. I think of the song Rattle, and that, that music comes straight from, that song comes straight from Ezekiel 37, uh, when it says, can these dry bones live? That comes straight from scripture and straight from the word of God. Even though it is a heavy metal song, it comes straight from the word of God. Um, So yeah, but I didn't mean to say that. So what I was really trying to say was, um, I was, um, the Lord gave, um, I was thinking about the sermon for Sunday, and the Lord gave me, uh, and I was thinking about the state of the church right now, and the upheaval that it's in, and the grief that she's experiencing. She's experiencing a lot of grief right now. And the church has not been good at processing grief. And it's a fine balance, I think, uh, from processing and talking about grief to uh, veering into gossip. And it's a fine balance. And it's a it's a different balance for everybody, and that is something that people are going to have to work out for themselves, uh, because it's it's human to grieve, but it's a fine line between grieving and gossiping, and that fine line is something that each person is going to have to work out for themselves. Um, uh, because I I began to think of uh, what I was told in the church that I went to. You never speak against the man of God and whatever, and I believed that for years. Um, but I was, and I still believe that to a certain extent, but I was watching somebody last night and it convicted me about just processing. 
Um, and it is totally human to process. Um, but I'm asking myself now, where's the line between processing and gossiping? And I think that's a line that everybody has to find for, for themselves. Um, and I believe uh, that line is different from for everybody, and I don't have the answer. So anyway, um, as I was saying, I was asking the Lord about the sermon for Sunday, and I was thinking about the church and uh, the grief that uh, the church is experiencing in the state of Texas and all over the world in different capacities. And all all the Lord kept saying, kept bringing to my mind was uh, the bass line from Come Together, you know that. Come together right now. Open me. And all I felt the Lord was saying, Come together right now. Open me. Stop division right now over me. And I just saw all these churches and all these people just coming together on their face before the Lord and just crying out, not only for forgiveness, not only for restoration, but just crying out to say, God, we need you. God, we need strategy. Remember I said, every can't has keys. He's wanting us to ask. We know we can't do this any, any on our own anymore. We know we're falling. We know we're failing miserably. We're fa- failing your girl miserably. But we need the keys for this can't. If you watch my sermon, Cans and Keys, I explain that. And if you watch um, Your Girl is in Trouble, I explain what that means, too. That's a sermon I did a few weeks ago. And all I, all I can, can hear the Lord saying is, Come together. Right now, open me. He's saying, stop all this division. Stop all this black and white stuff. He says, he says, we have bigger things to fry right now, bigger fish to fry. We need to start praying. We need to start fasting and going before the Lord and asking him, what do we do? And asking asking him for a strategy for this fight. It was so funny because I get a verse of the day every day from a popular Bible website. And I, <laughs> the Lord said, read, read the verse today. And I read the verse, and I thought, oh my gosh, what a good verse. He wanted to stir my heart today. Um, I look, I go on Facebook here just a few minutes ago, and on Facebook sometimes it will have your memories. And you know what I posted in 2016? The same verse from today that I read, it was the exact 
same verse. So you mean all, all out of all the verses in the Bible, they just recycle the same ones? And yes, they do. Because the same one I read today is the same one they posted. <laughs> I posted on Facebook back in 2016. So that's what the church has been doing. We've been recycling the same message, messages, doing the same worship songs, doing the same kind of uh, God is love thing. And all that stuff is great. It really is. And some of us need that. Some We're all at different stages. Some of us need that. But at the same time, um, I'm, I'm ready for God to do something different. I'm ready for God to blow my mind. I know that God is bigger. And we just need to let him be bigger than our churchology. We just need to, we just need to say, Lord, okay, how do you want us to come together? How do you want us to um, operate in this new season? Because he has, he has strategies uh, for this that we're not even tapping into because we're, we, we got to have church. Um, the Lord's not interested in having church. We are. The Lord's interested in taking the kingdom. The Lord's interested in being violent in the most gracious way ever. The Lord's interested in all of that. That's what he's interested in. He's in he's interested in kingdom. He's interested in in saving people from hell. He's interested in loving people just the way they are and changing them from inside out. That's what he's interested in. And all this stuff, we, we need to be praying and undergirding the church globally. So that's what I'm going to do right now on this live. Father, I praise you and I worship you and declare that you are God. Father, you can see your girl is in trouble, God. Your wife needs you. We need to get divine strategy, God. Drench us. Saturate us with your glory, God. Give us divine strategy. Show us your divine intention for this world. And Lord, I pray for the state of Texas right now. Lord Jesus, I I declare any demonic interference in that state is null and void by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those people are yours. That city, that state is yours. That region is yours. And I serve hell right now by the, by the power of the Holy Spirit. The earth is the Lord's. Texas is the Lord's. And nothing you will do, nothing you will say Satan will stand. Because all those people will rise up, Lord Jesus, and, and claim back the territory. The territory is already yours. But we're just claiming it like we know it's ours. We're not claiming it back, but we're claiming it like we know that it's ours. Drench us, Lord. Drench us in your spirit. Drench us in your love. Give us divine understanding. Cause us to come through as pure gold. Lord Jesus, the church is going through fire uh, globally. But we know your fire purifies us, Lord God. We know that you that we will be purified in this fire. 
and we'll come out as winners, we'll come out as victors, we'll come out as pure gold, the blood of Jesus, sweep the streets of Texas right now, God. All those people that are grieving, all those pastors that have fallen, all those Every little demon that is running around happy, I serve notice that that those people are not yours. And devil, take your hands off that state. Take your hands off those people. They will heal and they will be restored. Lord Jesus, just send help and stretch your hand of love upon them, oh God. Hug them, Lord Jesus. Give them love like never before. Send soldiers to to restore, not those, not without you, Lord, but send, send people in those in place to restore them, to heal them, to, to just work through them to do your good pleasure. Father, we know that you are the head of the church. Forgive us for mistaking it as we being the head of the church. We're not the head, we're just managers or department heads. You are the head of the church. And forgive us for taking advantage of your people if we if we have forgive us for being immoral forgive us for using people if we have forgive us lord god and teach us how to be generals of your spirit teach us how to be stewards of your people teach us how to be lovers of your people not physical lovers, God, but teach us how to love the, your people in a way that is pure, in a way that is holy. Lord God, I, I pray for every pastor that is struggling right now, every pastor that is in darkness, and declare you can come out. You can come out and be forgiven. You can come out and be restored. You can come out and be delivered. All you have to do is trust God and find someone that you can come out to and say, I'm struggling. Do not struggle in the dark, Pastor, because you will be found out. You will be found out. Because one thing that God doesn't do He doesn't tolerate you messing with his children. You may think you're getting away with it because people don't see you, but God sees you. And in due time, if if you don't come out yourself, he will expose you. Humans will not expose you, but he will expose you. But at the same time, as he exposes you, he'll cover you. He'll cover you like he did with, um, he did it with Lot and his daughter. Actually, when, when the, when Lot was exposed with his daughters naked, the person who saw them walked backwards so they were still covered. So he will be exposed but you will be covered at the same time. Because the thing is, God loves his people so much. He he wants uh, other people, other men and women of God to care and love his people just like he does. And the Lord understands you're broken, but that's no excuse to take advantage of his people, either financially, uh, spiritually, emotionally. And any of the pastors that are practicing spiritual manipulation, 
not saying if you if you do this, God will do that. If you give me this amount of money, God will do that or whatever. And without God saying it, because you want more money, he's saying that stops now. That stops now. And if it doesn't stop, you will be taken down. Not by men, but by God. Because I'm telling you that God doesn't play. He loves his children too much to let you play with them. To let you play them like a harp. And he will instill, install somebody who has his heart. Father, I pray that your blood will cover will cover your children as they're going through this now, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you bring the peace that passes all understanding to those affected, oh God. I pray that you restore what is broken. Heal every broken, every broken space, every broken place, oh God. Heal every broken place. And everyone that's been affected, heal them, restore them. Lord Jesus, let the pastors who are truly sorry know that there is healing, that there is restoration. And the same cross that they preach about, the same blood that they teach about is available for them too. You know, sometimes as a preacher, you forget that the same God you preach about, the exact same God that's for your congregation is for you as well. He wants to restore you. He wants to give you a new life. And there is nothing that you can't come back from. Remember I said before, as he exposes you, he will cover you. And he's waiting to, and he's waiting to embrace you with his love. Just as much as he's waiting for everybody. Everyone in your congregation with his love. The same love he has for your congregation is the same love he has for you. And he can forgive your sin just as much as he can forgive your congregation's sin. And pastor, you don't have to go through it alone. You don't have to go through it alone. He will send help. He will send uh, people. He will send resources. He will send therapists. Some of you have been dealing with these issues for years, they've been issues from when you were little boys and girls, but you never dealt with them because you were told, oh, just pray about it and sweep it under the rug. You can't just pray about it. Prayer requires action. Prayer gives you the power to act on what you need, uh, what he needs you to do, whether that action is to wait, whether that action is to go to therapy, whether that action is to come clean to your wife or to your congregation, to your husband, or to a friend. So prayer gives you the power to take active steps to to go towards healing. I want to say that freedom is available available for you as well. Wow. And he wants you to be free. He wants that everything you're preaching and teaching, he wants me to tell you that it's real and it's available for you, not only to your your congregation, but for you as well. And I circle back to my original point. He's saying, church, come together. 
right now over me. I've been really feeling that the church is at a place of of um, a decision. We can either let this pull us apart even more, or we can let this bring us together. Lord, let this situation in, in the church, not only in Texas, but in churches around the world, let it bring us together, not pull us apart. We've been pulled apart by stupid stuff for too long. We've been pulled apart by skin color. We've been pulled apart by denomination. We've been pulled apart by difference for too long. Let sameness bring us together. Let our love for Jesus Christ bring us together. Jesus died for each and every one of us. And he wants us to come together over him. He wants us to understand that he's, he prayed in John 17. He said, oh, that they may be one. And that was his prayer before he went to the cross. And that's his prayer for us today. He wants us to be one. One w- with all our differences. One with all our with all our differences of opinion. He wants us to be one because he wants us to know that whether we're white, we're black, we're Latino, we're Jamaican, we're we're Irish, we all belong to this one Christ. We all were created by this one God, one Christ. And he wants us to come together over him with all the things that divide us, with all the things that um, pull us apart. He wants us to know that this one thing brings us together. He says, come together right now. Oh, for me. That's what he says. Bring us together. Bind us together. What hate pulled us and what hate pulled pull apart. Bind us together in love. Bind us together, Lord, in love. We need love like crazy. We need love like crazy. We need love to bind us together. Bind us together with only that strong love that you have ordained, Father. In the name of Jesus. Bind us together now. Bind us together with hearts that cannot be gone. Can find us together, Lord. Find us together. Find us together. Find us together, Lord. Find us together. With hearts I cannot be broken. Find us together, Lord. Find us together, find us together. We fo- we focus so much on the difference. We focus on our worship differences. We focus on our baptism differences. We focus on our denominational differences. Do we speak in tongues? Do we not? Do tongues mean different languages or do tongues mean speaking in a spiritual language? When we when we first before we have a reasonable discourse about that, because we can debate reasonably, but before that we need to be bound together in love. Because what what man what men join together that no, what God has joined together, sorry, what God has joined together, 
that no man put asunder. So if God joined us together in Christ, no, no one can pull, pull, pull us apart. So God, I ask now for you to join us, to join us together, to bind us together in love, Father. Let love be the strongest thing that binds us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your spirit cleanse us and let love bind us together. Let your spirit speak from heaven and give us strategy on how to navigate this difficult season. Because, like you said a few weeks ago, every cant has a key. Give us strategy that will help us navigate this season. This season requires extreme navigation. This season requires to have our ears to the ground of what your spirit is saying. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Let every pastor, every leader hear what the Spirit is saying to the church globally, to the church um, in their communities, to the church in their cities, to the church in their countries. Because you speak globally but you speak in, in communities as well and in certain cities. There are certain territories in certain cities that, you, that we are supposed to take, but we can't take them without you, God. We can't take them without hearing you. And you will give certain pastors words on how to take the certain territories in their cities. Do that, Lord. We are listening. We want to hear. We may not know all of what to do, but we're listening, God. And if we're not listening, Lord, open our ears. Open our sense of discovery. Open, open our sense of curiosity of what you're saying. Help us to shut out all the voices so we can hear you. Help us to bring the right prophetic voices into our churches. Help us to bring prophets in our churches that don't play games, that don't think that this is some kind of game or don't use their, their prophetic uh, gifting as a badge, but they really are the sons of Issachar, that they can hear what's going on in the times and seasons and and kind of and um, convey that to their pastors and their leaders. Send us people like that. Send us prophets and pastors and teachers. Send us pastors with hearts to shepherd. We know all the people that just want to be pastoral celebrities, but send us shepherds. Raise up a generation of pastoral shepherds who want to lead your sheep, not to them, but to you, that can really discern what you're saying in this hour and what you're saying to the church. Lord, we bless you. We love you in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. The blood of Jesus be with you today. The blood of Jesus cleanse you. The blood of Jesus restore you. I'll see you later. Bye.
your sweet presence is in this place. I can feel it. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the touch of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can feel the touch of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I honor you right now. Honor you right now. I honor you. Just because you're God, just because you're God, I glorify. Your day, glory, Father, your, your name, glory, Father, oh, she loves your Just because you're God, just because you're God. Okay, guys, see you later.